Finn McKenty, thank you for uh, joining me on the Come Correct podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm grateful and honored to be here. I'm a uh, fan. So I, I think, you know, for for those who are, you know, listeners to the podcast or or they they check out my YouTube channel, if if they can't tell already, music is a massive part of my life. Um, and the what I always tell people is like, you know, if if weightlifting is here, music is way up here. And um I know that you know, being a YouTuber myself, YouTube is like the biggest platform where I consume content. And so that's how I found your channel. Some, I've, I don't know what video it was, but it was like two or three years ago. Uh, and so I, as, as your introduction, I, I guess it's, I, I just want to say that, you know, your channel, and I, I feel as though your channel is actually kind of having this renaissance, or maybe you're having this renaissance. Um, and I know we discussed it earlier um, on when I was on your podcast, but to to start, I guess what I want to know from you is what are you trying to do? Like video in and video out throughout the course of your channel, what are you trying to accomplish? Well, for anybody who doesn't know me, just to quickly tell you who I am, uh, I have a YouTube channel called The Punk Rock NBA, and then I have another one with my own name, just Finn McKenty. And uh, on both of those, I make videos about music, kind of specifically like alternative music, whether that's like metal or punk or alternative rap or you know it, or it, any any kind of alternative music i talk about that whether that's like you know history or current artists or whatever that's sort of my corner of things um but to answer your question my actual goal for the channel which you know maybe i'm successful maybe i'm not is i want to help people become better critical thinkers meaning to ask themselves, why do I believe this thing that I believe? And uh, it, it uh, what assumptions do I have that may not be correct? Why do I like the thing? Why do I like or dislike the things that I don't like or, or do like? And should I change my perspective about any of those things? Because that's something that I've always tried to do in my own life. And I know it's helped me a lot. So again, I have no idea to what extent I'm successful with this, but I try to use music as sort of a way to do that. And you found a group of uh, listeners that are very dramatic, if you will, uh, in metal fans. Yes. The, yeah. The their, metal, metal fans. Their attachment to their, to their music is very, very uh, strong. Yeah. Metal, metal fans, you know, the CrossFitters, the music world. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Okay. Let's go. Yes. Yeah. So you know, that's both good and bad, uh, cuts both ways, meaning that it's good in that, you know, there are people who, you know, they love this music and they, so they get really excited about if I talk about something that they like or don't like, uh, you know, and that's awesome. And I am very grateful for that. The downside of that is that if you say something they don't like, then, uh, you know, you're going to find out about it. <laughs> and, and if you promote music that they that it may not be something that they like or dislike. They've made the decision before they've even heard yes. it. It's like, this can't yes. be good. Exactly. And and you and I, we chat pretty much daily about pop music and our affinity yeah. for pop music. Um, and I think I, I love the idea of like free thinking and how it translates to music. And and it could translate to, to I think, cinema as well. Anything, any part yeah. of your life. It should, right. be, it, it should be every part of your life. Like, yeah, like what is it about this metal song that I really like? Well, yeah. could I find that in a Charlie XCX song? Right. And like the possibility is like, yes, it's likely true that you could. You or know, that, even larger than that, like why do I why have I been hanging out with the same group of people for 10 years, even though it makes me feel bad every time I come home from hanging out with them? Yeah, there is a massive like, that's like, that's the real that's the real point I want to get to. I have no idea whether I achieve it or not but like that's really where i'm trying to go is like i want everybody because i'm constantly questioning my own assumptions and opinions and tastes and I, I i would like to help other people do the same because i think that's the most important thing you can do as a human so yeah like it's a very um philosophical way of looking at things and it, it's almost like those movies where there's just like a group of friends and one friend is just like hey what if we you know like didn't think this way Right. Like we're so sure of ourselves that we think this way. What if we didn't? And they all like right. turn their backs on him or whatever. Yeah, and, and music for better or for worse is identity for a lot of people, not for everybody. Um, but for a lot of people, this is true of a lot of like, I think men 
really kind of get into this thing of um, the, their hobbies and their media consumption becomes their whole identity. You know, like I watch this type, I'm into horror movies or I'm into this type of comic book or play this kind of video games, listen to this kind of music. Um, and that cuts, like I said, that cuts both ways for content creators, because on the one hand, there's this audience of people who are really passionate about this thing. And they're going to be very excited if you share, you know, your own passion for the thing. But like you said, people have, it's an unfortunate side effect to that is that people have decided that if I like this thing, that means I can't like this other thing. So what's been your difficulty trying to prove this, that, I mean, in, 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 a certain way you are telling your audience like, Hey, you might be wrong. How, how, how's that <laughs> been? You know what I mean? Like, how's that process been for you? It's what have you, rough. what sort of things have you done to, to hope to make that work? Well, uh, so for example, I've, I, I made a video, I may have talked about this many times, but, um, I I've, I've talked before about how like rock in general is a genre that's kind of stuck in the past. Like if you look at festival lineups, the headliners are like these bands like and nothing nothing wrong with these bands but it's like disturbed and shine down and corn and stuff like that these bands these guys are like in their in their 50s now these bands are like 20 30 years sometimes you know you go to europe and it's like fucking kiss and the scorpions headlining these guys are in their 70s and there's nothing wrong with that and there's like that's not a bad thing but it sort of makes me ask like, all right, well, what happens when these guys literally can't play shows anymore? Like Ozzy, you know, unfortunately his health is failing. He can't play shows anymore. Are we developing the next generation of people to like fill their shoes? And if we don't, then what happens to the genre? Is it going to be like jazz where only, you know, grandpas listen to it? Yeah. The, and do we want that? Off the top of my head, the only ones that I can think of are... um like off, what's the name of the I can't even like the name of the band um they the Led Zeppelin oh, you know copiers um, Greta Van Fleet yeah you know yeah, that's the only not even they're not even really headliners yeah um, yeah they're they're not I mean I, I saw them at ACL they were like third row on right the, on the thing yeah and again respect to them like yeah. they, they've only been a man for like five or six years and they're killing it yeah. good for them I, compare that, that to like rap or pop like you know, Rolling Loud just happened and Ice Spice was one of the highlights of it. And I don't know exactly where she was on the on the placement, but pretty high. And she's only been making music for like a year or two. Yeah. Because those genres are much more willing to like embrace new artists. And I'm not saying that's good or bad necessarily. So this is where this is definitely what I wanted to get into. Um, cause I, I've been chatting with you on the side, not in, you know, the public sphere about sleep token quite a bit and i've converted a lot of my friends um my roommate is trying to book them for a podcast because he's mm, all okay. you know um he's a sleep token stan well <laughs> it's just interesting you can't go viral yeah. spotify four times in a row and not and not there not be something there absolutely that is no joke yeah and so i've this is where i want to push back on you finn a yeah bit. please do because you're like, ah, it's not hooky enough. It's not poppy enough. Uh, it's a six minute song, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yep. So in and this yet, world. The, and, and and yet they have four songs on the Spotify viral top 50. So, so clearly there's something why. I am missing. Here's why. Because you only need 15 seconds yep. or 60 seconds or 90 seconds to fit in a TikTok yep. or to fit in an Instagram reel. So that part where it's like um, the of the summoning. Part. The funky part yeah. of the summoning. All you need is 15. Yep. And it's so um, other than that, too, like those four songs, uh, they have like insanely poppy hooks. So like yeah. Chokehold, I was listening to the other day and we were we were working out me and my roommate, Chris. Chris was like, dude, if you told me this was a cover of an Ariana Grande song, I would believe you. Totally. And and so I think that is, really yeah, like, there's of those four songs I forget which is which is that the one that's like the really poppy one? Because there's one of is, the four. Granite is pretty poppy. Granite. Maybe that's maybe that's the one. There's one of those four songs where I was like, yes, this is what I want them to do. Yeah, and this is just my hold, own personal opinion. I think I think chokehold 
that that chorus and that hook is like literally sounds like an Ariana Grande, like kind of dark, sexy song. I agree. Or like you Sam know? Smith or something. I agree. Right. I just wish they would for me personally. You want them to push it further and get rid of the like three other minutes of like meandering prog stuff. Just me personally, because for for my personal the, the way I think, I mean, I'm a, I'm a marketer at the end of the day. Like that's my job. That's what I went to school for. That's what I've done for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So for me, my interest is the way my brain works is how big can we make this thing? Whatever it is. Like if you tell me to sell cars, how many cars can I sell? How do I do it? Yeah. Um, I'm not, I, I'm a, uh, my, my goal is to make the cash register ring. That's how I think. And I'm not saying that that's like the way everyone should think or that it's, that's just my personal perspective on it. And so what I am looking for, if you remember back in like the TRL era, remember when like Corn and Paramore and Sum 41 and Limp Biscuit and stuff were, and Blink-182 were going like head to head. Like there's an episode of TRL where it was literally Blink-182 and 98 degrees, like facing off for the number one spot. When these bands in these genres were like legitimate, like mainstream stars, that is what I want. Because again, that's just how my brain works. And again, because I think that's going to be good for the whole genre because rock has never been as popular as it was during that era. And I, and I think it's because even if you hate all those bands, it doesn't matter. They're the ones that like establish a beachhead. Just the same as in the fitness world, you get some fucking, you know, these influencers or whatever that blow up that get people into fitness and then that trickles down, blah, blah, blah. So a rising tide lifts all boats is the way I see it. And so for me personally, it's not enough, like good for any band that like gets a million or two million listeners on Spotify and is, you know, playing shows to 1200 people like that's awesome and good for them. And there's every reason for them to be happy for that. Uh, happy with that. But for me, what I want is a transcendent like breakout star. That's what I'm looking for. Do you think that do you think that bring me the horizon is close? Close, yes. But yeah. again, they're also a 20 year old band. Right. Yeah. Not to discredit them at all. What do you I mean? So do you think that I think that singer songwriters or pop stars have kind of ruined that? Like um, so you know well, you know who is that that rock people hate is MGK. Yeah. And I mean, he seems like a dick and I don't want to be his friend, but let's not take anything away from him. He went number one back to back on Billboard with pop punk albums. He's like a legitimate mainstream celebrity that's on TMZ and shit like that. How many people are going to get into this music because of him that are then going to go on to listen to fucking Lorna Shore and Sleep Token or whatever? <laughs> yeah. It's going to it's happening. I guarantee you. Yeah. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah. That Do you think? Do you think a band could do this or does it just have to be a sing? Like, cause that's what I mean. Like solo artists, yeah. they have gone off. Like Harry Styles has yeah. a rock show now. And like, if, I'm sure you've seen live video. It's just rock and roll. You yeah. know, he's got a band and he, but it's like, that's not rock. No, it's not a, it's not gonna, you know, it's not, it doesn't give you the vibe of Blink-182 facing off versus 98 degrees, which by the way, when you mentioned all of those bands, I thought of immediately leads to those songs came to my head. Like the actual, either whether it was lead guitar, the lead riff of the piano, whatever it was, uh -huh. came in for every one of those bands. Yeah, like, they had great hooks. They and typically hook hooks. Is, typically the hook is the vocal, but not always. Um, yeah. And I mean, it could even be the drums. Like if you know that song Blue Monday by... Um, new order that orgy yep. covered, you know, that yep. has like a drum hook, which is pretty rare, but they exist. Um, to your point, I definitely think that solo artists work much better in the current environment. Um, in particular, because it is much easier. I think it's a, a, just a part of human psychology is that we connect with individuals more than we connect with groups. Like you think about team sports, for example, you're a Tom Brady fan and you've, you know, or, right. or maybe you hate him, whatever, but you're a Russell Wilson fan. Like you connect these teams become like a breakout success when they have some sort of a breakout star on them. And you don't even, unless you're a hardcore fan, you don't even fucking know anybody past, you know, the quarterback and the wide receiver and the coach or whatever. Like our brains are just programmed for that. And in particular on social media, it's just a lot easier for us to like connect with one person who can make TikToks than it is to connect with four or five people. And in any of these groups, typically there is always like a breakout star. In the case of Blink, 
it it happens occasionally that all three of them actually are super charismatic people so with star power. If you look at MGK, Harry Styles, Post yep. Malone, those are like yep. the closest to rock stars that we have. Yep. Or I, before Juice, Peep, X. Right. But they all start through other genres. They all start. So like Post Malone grows through hip hop and then he can dabble with rock and roll yep. and dabble with singer songwriter shit. Yeah. Uh, Harry Styles, pop music. And now he's got like a rock band. Yeah. Uh, and then MGK, hip hop, and then into pop punk. Yeah, I just feel like that there is no way for an organic rock and roll band to exist at that level. I just don't think it's possible. I think anything is possible. If it's happened before, it can happen again. There's nothing that was different about 2003 from 2023 that would mean it can't happen. But it can only happen if rock culture will allow it to happen. Meaning that I feel like anytime someone uh deviates from the sort of like rigid expectations that the fans have then they hate them and there's all these examples of um maybe not necessarily bands but certainly solo artists who are rock adjacent that are having a ton of success let's take Lil Uzi Vert for example right or Playboy Cardi for that matter Playboy mm -hmm. Cardi has a bad religion tattoo you know Trippy Red made a rock album Lil Uzi Vert obviously a rock guy he went to a Lorna Shore show years ago before they were even popular like he's not a fucking tourist. Right. And rock people want nothing to do with any of them. And uh, I think that's problem number one. Is yeah. That, you had a video on Suicide Boys as well. Yeah. Yeah. Suicide Boys. There's an I mean, they're a right. duo. Yeah. There's an example. They're yeah. a duo. And they and were like they're fucking in, big. They came like right out of punk. Like they were actual yes. punk fucking dudes. Yes, they did. And they are a fantastic. Group. It's video only two of them. them. Yeah. But it, it's it's they're a group and they're selling out arenas. They're playing. They're playing the same venues as fucking Jack Harlow. Yeah. I mean, that's you cannot argue with that. They have like 11 million Spotify listeners. They're fucking huge. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and they're doing it. The problem right. is that they aren't they aren't seen as part of rock culture, even though, as you said, they very clearly obviously are. But all the boomers and I say boomer because boomer is a state of mind, not an age. Right. The boomers won't accept them. And so it's. It sort of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like, well, um, rock isn't popular uh, and we're going to rigidly put uh, push out anything that doesn't fit our definition of rock and therefore rock will continue not to be popular. Yeah, it's very, because like metal seems like the move now. Metal or uh, punk-ish kind of yeah. hip hop. It doesn't seem like that can exist like the rock can. I mean, there I, is I, one exception to that is, uh, do you know the band Monoskin? Mm -mm. They're really big. They won Eurovision. They're Italian. I, I don't really care for their music at all, um, but uh, they are very, 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 very big. Like, I want to say 20 million Spotify listeners. Or Whoa. Something. And they've only been a band for like five years. OK. Um, and they're and like they're rock years. like. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. I, I don't think I it's like amazing out. necessarily, but it doesn't matter what I think. Um, yeah. they're so, I mean, they're doing it. So I, I, I think you're correct that generally speaking, it's way harder for a band to succeed now than, uh, it may have been in the past, but I mean, K-pop also makes it work with groups. Yeah. It's just what's trending. I think, I think there's, there could be something that, that occurs. You can, you can make it work, you know, never I, say never. You can make it work where there's a will, there's a way. Do you feel as though you're you're kind of got the blinders on now to where you're almost like fed up with metal too much or do, do you ever like i feel as when I, when i speak to you you know again in private it's like it's yeah. almost as if you're like ah can't i just can't be fucked to listen to that or you know i feel like i feel like finn some you're at this point now where you're like swaying too far to like all you want is a hook and all you want is a popular rock band do you still you know, give it up for metal every once in a while? Or is it just like, are you tired? Sure, yeah, of course. But just like, I mean, I'm wearing a cerebral incubation shirt right now, <laughs> which is like a really fucking nasty, obscure, like slam death metal band. I like that stuff. I like a lot of like really gross, weird black metal. Um, I like a, a lot of hardcore. There's a lot of good hardcore bands now, like Drain, for example, is awesome. There's a band called Gridiron that's awesome. I like a lot of that stuff. What I don't like is kind of this, I, I think 
metalcore, especially right now, is fucking absolutely shot. It's like every fucking band has these ripoff fucking Bring Me the Horizon or Architects verses. Um, yep. These fucking just completely fucking derivative shot gent riffs for the verses and then a fucking half-assed Lincoln Park chorus. And I'm fucking sick of it. It's trash. It's like we've been doing this for 10 fucking years since Sempaternal came out. Everyone has just been on their fucking dick for 10 fucking years. And it's yeah. like, guys, we already have one bringing the horizon. We don't need fucking 500 more. So so my answer to that would be like, I think Turnstile um, take, get, putting out that album yeah, it's try- just being like, hey, this could be the new uh, sure. metalcore. Like this, we we can go more towards hardcore, more towards punk. I think. Yeah, yeah like, I, I mean, I, I know, know exactly what the fuck you're talking about, J- dudes. Just, <laughs> I think you said in your video, like, as long as it's not dudes genting in a colored, colored room. room, yeah, <laughs> in their fucking LED room that looks like some kid that plays too much Fortnite. You know, like guys, no more fucking motorcycle jackets. No more fucking gent riffs. No more Lincoln Park choruses. Just find something else to fucking do. Like what? it's been done so many fucking times. Specifically metalcore and all the fucking metalcore, yeah, garbage that they play on like Octane. I'm so fucking over it. It's so, trash. So, um, a song that I've been listening to recently is, and I know I'm late on this because it came out like six months ago. But when we were young, by Architects. Uh huh. Do you think that's a slight change or is that exactly the garbage that you're talking about? Well, with Architects and Bring Me the Horizon, I mean, they're the two bands that like pioneered that sound. Right. But I you think know? I, I feel like this is much more dumbed down. It, it sounds it yeah, much yeah, yeah, more it hardcore. It sounds like. But, like but you, you know what I mean? Plugged like, into a PA. I'm going to I'm going to exempt those two bands. There's there's a thing that happens where a band who pioneers a style can end up sounding generic because they've been like ripped off so many times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, architects is a perfect example of that. There's so many fucking architects ripoffs that it almost makes architects sound generic, yeah. which, you know, I, I think is unfair to them, but I, you know, I understand why people might think that. So that song, when we were young, the other difference with architects, I care a lot about lyrics and vocal performance and like the message Architects actually have something to say. For example, the lyrics to that song are, I, I think, very good. Um, and if you know the history of the band, um, I'm not sure. Do you know about y- yes, Tom one and of the everything? Mem- yes, one of the members dying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And and they write a lot about that, and that's real. And I think a lot of these bands, these shitty metalcore bands, don't actually have anything to say. I think that they're just kind of going through the motions um, and playing stuff that's you know sounds meaningful but doesn't actually have any meaning if that makes sense i don't think they have anything to say this is where i'm optimistic is like people are just like that again like my the reason why i like that song is it is it sounds like they're plugged into a pa it literally yeah. is just like four dudes plugged into their fucking yeah you know is that where the refreshing aspect of metal to you is going to go like where you just like it's dudes literally playing out of amps I mean, it could be. um, That's what Turnstile felt like to me. Yeah, that's one option, you know, but there's an infinite number of options. You know, it's not for me to say what people, you know, what specific thing people should do. And I think, like, if anything, I would say the opposite of that. Just do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. But, you know, just take off, the like you said, just, like, take off the fucking shackles. You don't have to do the same fucking thing as everyone else. Um, and, And I would argue that it's not even... Like, even if you're trying to get famous and make money, I don't think that's how you do it. I mean, like... It's by is, genting. Yeah. I mean, there's a handful of bands that are broken through, but like, you know, Bad Omens, I would say, is probably the biggest breakout in that genre in the past several years. And the reason why is because they have a fucking amazing vocalist. Because I know metal fans don't want to hear it, but like vocals are the most important part of almost every song. And if you look at the biggest bands in metal... They have great vocalists yep. with really strong lyrics and vocal hooks like Slipknot, Korn, Limp Bizkit. Well, I mean, Fred's not a good vocalist per se, but like they have very strong hooks, you know, uh, Bring Me the Horizon, you know, like the, the, it's a thing. And Bad Omens is a great example of that. 
I think we got to get less fucking guitarists running the show. That's a huge problem is a lot of this music is just by guitarists for guitarists. And uh, that's not a recipe for success. Yeah, no one's ever like as far as popular music goes, no one's ever given a shit about virtuosity. Except no. for a moment there. There, you know, if you want to talk about hair metal days, though, I think that's what kind of like yeah. made it so that, you know, the you know, Eddie Van Halen was more yep. uh famous than than anyone else in that band, I think. And and yep. Jimmy Page as well. I think Jimmy Page was bigger than Robert Plant, I think. Yep. You you know, it goes on and on. I think that's part you of your the metal slash and you know, yeah. all those people for sure. You and that's part of that metal culture, but I don't think they ever got in the way of a good fu- like I think well, girls look, showed it, up because they wanted to fuck Robert Plant. Yeah, yes. And if and you I, lost women, game over. If women I, I, don't like your music, you, it's done, dude. I here's what I think. It's it's if you're a good guitarist, great. That's awesome, and that's another aspect of your band for people to want to fuck and you know yeah. whatever. But the riff the the hook like so it could be a vocal hook it could be a yeah. chorus that's a hook but if there's a riff then it's just as good as having a good lead singer well it can be but it usually isn't um, so sweet child it, of in, mine is a riff that's yeah. a riff you know like it, it goes on and on like um satisfaction is a riff that's yeah you know that these are songs where like yeah well maybe the rolling stones isn't a good example because you know, the, he's not the Keith isn't like the greatest guitarist, but well, Eddie Van Halen great. came. I mean, yeah, Eddie Van Halen came up couldn't with play for shit, hooks. but he wrote great songs. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, do, the coolest do, do thing it. I saw with with Kurt Cobain was the interview Howard Stern had with um, uh, David Grohl, Dave Grohl. Mm hmm. And he was like, they, you know, Howard Stern doing this like pushy interviewee shit yeah. with him. All it was was about Kurt. Or uh, oh, it was, you know, it's like the whole time. Like, yeah, and, but Dave, don't you think that blah, blah, blah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there was the part where he's like, dude, all Kurt wanted to do was make the simplest, most catchy song. That was it. That was like one of the lines I heard. I'm like, you yeah. fucking, you fucking grunge nerds, you metal dorks. <laughs> you love Kurt Cobain, but you hate pop music. Right. Your Lord and Savior is uh, the king of hooks. Okay. Yeah. So take another band like Polyphia, which has had a lot of success despite being just absolute fucking turbo <laughs> nerd music. Um, and ask, ask Tim Henson from Polyphia. He does not give a fucking shit about metal. All he listens to is rap and pop. You can go on his YouTube channel and he will show you exactly which rap and pop songs he has used for inspiration. I, I playing God is a like it's just a trap song yeah it's a tra straight up trap song there's another song i forget which one it is where he, on youtube he breaks down how he copied the structure from a taylor swift song like he's not trying to hide it he doesn't give a fuck about metal yeah so even i guarantee you that nobody in bring the horizon is going home and listening to fucking you know uh i prevail you know the, 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 yeah oh fuck no yeah, I mean, I and fucking no, hung out with the guys. I know they're not listening to that. No, and that's no shade on I Prevail. It's just, and this goes back. I remember when I was a kid, I was really into Anthrax. And I remember reading an interview in like Guitar World with Scott Ian. And they asked him what music he listened to. And he was like, oh, uh, Madonna. And I was like, what? Yeah. No, what? The guy uh, from Anthrax doesn't go home and listen to Testament? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, wasn't, didn't. Rob Zombie's favorite band didn't he say baby metal? Yeah, I think he said baby metal or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it makes yeah. sense. And so yeah. the point the is, like, for I, I think there's a huge problem with just rock culture in general, but especially metal is like their their frame of like musical reference is so fucking narrow that I mean, of course, if all you listen to is fucking you know Lorna Shore and Cattle Decapitation and 500 other bands that sound like them infinite annihilator or whatever of course you're going to make music that is like derivative and uninteresting because you're drawing from such a narrow range of influences yeah so if i'm to translate this into my own life um like uh you know um sorry someone just rang on the doorbell my roommate's gonna get that they always do that uh, but uh like 
the moment I try and branch out into something a little bit more mainstream, I can feel the pressure from yes. my audience being like, Hey, you know, you are our guy, like, don't leave us yeah. type of thing. Um, and so I definitely feel this a lot in my own YouTube and I know you do too. Um, but there, I think there are tricks of the trade to, to be able to do this. You know, yeah. you don't want to be like, fuck you to my audience. No. Um, I'm going, I'm changing. And if you guys aren't changing with me, fuck off. Cause guess what? They're going to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. They're going to fuck off and they're not going to come back. And no. yeah, exactly. And so, um, what, what I've started to do, you know, like yesterday I, I put out a video and it was like, cause, cause I did the CrossFit open just yeah. like without training for it. It was fun. It was novel. And I do, it's like, you know, the same way you feel about pop music is the same way I feel about CrossFit. It's like, well, you know, weightlifting, powerlifting, strength training seriously is my metal. It's my rock and roll. Yeah. But CrossFit is my pop. And Which so you're not allowed. You're not allowed to like CrossFit because CrossFit exactly. is CrossFit is for losers that don't know how to do a pull up and blah, blah, blah. Exactly. A hundred percent. So I go and I dabble with CrossFit and it's fun. Like I'm having fun and I'm like, damn, that was really cool. Like that was it felt good. And then, you know, there's a ton of comments being like, oh, great. You're a fucking CrossFitter now. It's like, <laughs> right. by the way, less than 24 hours later, I posted a video of us at a, a booth in the Arnold doing snatching and clean and jerking. Yeah. Like it's not who I am. I'm just I want to go over here. Yeah. Today. I want to go over there. I want to go over there. Yeah. And even when I do, what an opportunity for your tiny fucking strength and you know, strength and conditioning YouTuber to go hang out with Bring Me the Fucking Horizon. Yeah. Okay. And then to bitch about Bring Me the Horizon and how they sold out. I can't tell you how many comments I got from people being like, Yeah, that's really cool that you got to do that. Too bad. Bring me the horizon sold out and they suck. It's like, yeah. What are you guys in what reality are you living in? You know, it's it's uh it's crazy. Well, I mean, welcome to metal. Yeah, I, dude, you. I want you to start to start interviewing some um, some pop people for your podcast. So have you reached reached out to any of like bigger names or or singer songwriters, or is it usually the the metal? Uh, I, you know, my my job. I try to stay very humble, and you know, our conversation was really helpful. So I want to thank you again for everything you told me. It was super helpful. Oh yeah, I yeah. Let's, I mean, I guess we can kind of, yeah. re well, I, I try to stay humble and grateful rather than getting angry at the audience because, you know, I, I, I mean, they bought me a house. I mean, that's just a fact, you right. know, right. and they don't owe me anything They're They, they, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for f the fact that anybody gives a shit what I have to say about anything at all. And so if I catch myself getting, you know, frustrated with them, I try to just like dial it back and stay grateful, number one, and humble, which is nobody is obligated to give a shit what I say about anything. Um, and so in general, my job, I look at it as my job is to create content that my audience is going to enjoy. Um, it is not my job to you know express my own opinion necessarily. If those two things overlap, that's awesome, but they don't have to. And so with podcast guests, um, you know, my audience is like dudes in their thirties basically. And, uh, you know, I don't think that those people want to hear me, uh, talk with pop stars because they don't know who those people are. They don't care. And, uh, I'm not going to try to force that on them. Interesting. Interesting. I, but do you feel as though like, you know, my, I don't even know my podcast audience really that well. It's a relatively new experience for me making this. I know, I know there's these listeners out there that, that really like the channel. It's like, I almost want to extend the olive branch and be like, Hey, you know, there is a relationship here between music creation and strength and conditioning creation. Yeah. This so definitely the, is, you know, this, the whole first half is basically about how you can balance, um, this ideology around how you feel, uh, about something and maybe maybe challenge it like that's your goal it's yeah. absolutely my goal and it almost should be any creator's goal so i try to find that similarity there but i i see what you're saying that it might be hard to pull in ariana grande obviously it'd be hard to get her but um to pull yeah. in ariana grande and and have that relationship to metal but you never know yeah well i mean there's even like 
smaller pop artists that I'm sure I could talk to like alternative, you know, kind of pop artists. Like, I don't know, there's like a artist named Dane, for example, who I, I love. She, or I guess they did a song with, uh, with Ollie from bring the horizon, uh, a year or two ago or something. I'm what sure song could, was that? Uh, I forget the name of it. It's, it's a Dane song. Ollie's the feature. Okay. Okay. Was I think it, it's it, called salt. Okay. I think, That's um, cool. But for example, I'm sure I could get Dane on, um, but you know, would my audience care about that? Eh, probably not. Yeah, maybe, yep. maybe not. I don't know. You, you never, you really never know. Um, but uh, in general, I'm not trying to force my tastes or interests on them. Uh, you know, if they want to hear, look, I made three videos about new metal in the last week. <laughs> I, I hate know, new metal. Dude. I hate new metal. I'm, I'm so, so tired of it. I watched your other channel. I, I think I watch your other channel to be honest more than it's better. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's better personally. Cause it's just, it's not curated as much. Yeah. Um, and you said you hated new metal on that and it shocked the shit out of me. I was like, there's no way. <laughs> okay. So you, this is okay. Again, challenging Finn. Yeah. You hate new metal yet. You want new metal again. You want new I metal. I don't want the sound of new metal because we have plenty of that. I I want, I want, well, I don't mean, I don't even care personally, but um, f from the point of view, if I'm putting on the hat of someone who is an advocate for the genre of rock, um, I want breakout mainstream stars in the same way as Fred Durst was Corn. a breakout mainstream star yeah. in 2001. Whether that sounds like I, I I would prefer it doesn't sound like Limp Biscuit, but uh, so specifically that's what I'm after is like the breakout star part, less so the sound of new metal part. So you you genuinely don't like you don't like Limp Biscuit, like you don't you don't like it. I mean, it's okay, I suppose. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world. Limp Limp Biscuit's okay. Lincoln Park's pretty good. Uh, Corn, I I would say is my favorite of those bands by far. Um, yeah, I think it's the most respected one. Yeah, Corn's really good. Um, Lincoln Park has a lot of really great songs that just really aren't like they they are just good songs that could be in any genre. You could make any of those into a pop song, you know. Right. Um, but in general, like I mean, I think I, it blows my fucking mind that people think Mudvayne is like great music. That <laughs> shocked me. Like, really, this is where our taste <laughs> is at. That like. You're like ready to die on the hill of defending fucking Mudvayne, the band <laughs> that glued fucking bugles to their faces. I mean, look, whatever, like what you like. I don't care. It's just, I never thought we would see this day. Oh man. Um, yeah, man. I think we're going to wrap it up. Just a little short guy there. Okay. Um, but, uh, I do appreciate you coming on and, um, I love, I love the, connection that i feel between music and and like i don't know i don't even like calling it fitness you know but i guess that's like the art sure. you know the, the overarching term but this connection to just between creators but i think and, it's really about strength sports not so much fitness because i don't think it's like running you know yes yeah i think it's specifically strength sports and combat sports yeah and there's definitely ideologues that exist here in oh, this, yeah. you know, people, it's every people's I, entire identity. I just made yes. that skit the other day. But I don't know if you saw, but it was no. like, if strength sports were people and I just, you know, was a person, but except I was powerlifting Ooh. or I was. Okay, I need to see that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, there's a guy who walks in the door at the end and he's just Greg. His name is Greg, but it's just me again. And his thing is like, yeah, you know, I have a, a wife and kid. I work nine to five job. Um, and I'm really good at mitigating stress. And then yeah. everyone's like, wait, so you're telling me, you know, the gym isn't your entire identity. And he's like, you know what? I guess it isn't. And they're like, get the fuck out of <laughs> right. here. Right. What's wrong with you? You fucking loser. You fucking loser. Yeah. Like, like you're telling me metalcore isn't like everything to you. You know, you know that's kind of how I feel about jujitsu. Not so much <laughs> yes. that like, it's not even that I, I, and sorry, I don't mean to keep you, but I would be no, interested no, no, in no. your this thoughts is... on this. Um, I just can't make jujitsu as big of a part of my life as other people do. And I'm not faulting them for that, but you know, there's like guys in their twenties 
that like have some like dead they're jujitsu bums and all they want to do is train and watch videos and talk about jujitsu and i think that's awesome like there's i have no problem with that there's a lot of worse things you could be doing but it's just kind of a bummer to train with them because i can't do that even if i wanted to and it's it's almost like not fun because they get better so much faster than i do and it's just like man this fucking sucks like you're beating me worse than you did every week. You beat me worse than you did the week before, you know? So for me, it was, dude, I, I stopped doing jujitsu and I started making more money. I started getting more subscribers. I started making more videos. I started getting better at answering emails. Yeah. I started getting healthier, eating better, establishing yeah. really like everything got better for me. And this is a me problem. This is me. This is, you can absolutely go to jujitsu three times a week. Me, sure. it's like, if I'm not going five, seven times a week, you know, like I'm losing to those guys and I can't yeah. do that. Yeah, um, exactly. I can't, exactly. I can't show my professor that I'm not dedicated to the craft. So it, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah. It's something where if I come back, I'm going to have a balance to it. And I don't care. I'm going to go three times a week. I'm going to chill, have fun and get the fuck out of the gym. I have to, or else I'm going to go insane, you know? Yeah. Cause other, it's just, I mean, I love jujitsu. It's so fun, but it just, it's not fun. It's not even that I'm like, I'm not like one of these people that's mad about losing. Cause I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm a purple belt, which not that that's anything special, but you don't get to purple without getting smashed literally thousands of times. Like exactly. it's not, the, it's not about ego. Like, Oh, I don't want to lose. It's just like, if you're losing 80% of the time, it's literally just not fun. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yep. That's pretty much it. And like you, you just, yeah, it's absolutely it. And, and then, you know, you feel that pressure to go all the time and yeah, then, exactly. It's for like, me, my this, productivity this, was way down. This is making me feel more stressed out. <laughs> yes. Like, why am I doing this? You know? Yes. Why do I need ad added stress? Like, why do I need added competition? There's so much competition in YouTube and exactly what we do. In I don't general. need a third job. <laughs> All right, Finn. Um, we're going to cut it there. Okay. Uh, I appreciate you coming by. Uh, guys, please go to punk rock NBA, uh, and then Finn McKenty, two different channels. Uh, his second channel, Finn McKenty, I think is better than the other one. It's I agree the one that I watch more. Uh, it's more off the cuff. And then on Instagram, it's just Finn McKenty, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, am I missing anything? That's it. All right. Uh, appreciate you, Finn.